All right, so get this. James Franco, you know, right. the guy, Spider-Man, 127 Hours, yeah. is now, like, directing and starring in Italian films. Italian films. Yeah. Of all things, right. What is the yeah. deal with that? What is up with that? So today we're going to unpack this article. It's called James Franco's Journey from Hollywood Icon to Italy's Redemption Seeker. And we're going to try to figure out what in the world led him to this point and, you know, just what this unexpected career shift might mean for his future. Yeah, I mean, what's so fascinating about this whole thing is how it seems like such a deliberate step away from, like, all the spotlight, right? Right. Like, he was commanding all this attention in Hollywood, and now it seems like such a huge shift. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah, you're telling me this isn't just... Like some actor, you know, dipping their toes in a couple of indie films. Yeah. This is this is a complete 180, <laughs> right? But um, before we get into all of that, the Italian chapter and all of that, let's rewind a bit. Okay. I mean, we all know Franco, you know, Spring Breakers, 127 Hours, even the Oscar nomination for 127 Hours. Mm -hmm. Like, the guy was everywhere. He was. He was everywhere, and he was like... He was such a multi-hyphenate talent, mm -hmm. always pushing the boundaries, not just acting, but writing, directing, teaching. Right. He was like almost synonymous with ambition, you know? Yeah. And that creative drive. And then 2019 happened, yeah. the allegations, the lawsuit, and then silence. It all stopped. Yeah. It felt like his career just hit a brick wall. It did. It marked a huge turning point for sure. I mean, the allegations of inappropriate behavior with his acting students, that was big. Yeah. I mean, it sparked a massive controversy. And I think whether you agree with the idea of cancel culture or not, it's impossible to deny the impact it had. Right. You know, it really did impact his career. Yeah. It's it's a tough topic for sure. And I think we're not really here to, to pass judgment or anything like that. But it's pretty clear. That, that this event forced Franco to kind of like step back and reevaluate things. Mm -hmm. And instead of, I don't know, like trying to ride out the storm or something, he decided to embrace a completely different approach mm -hmm. like to life. And I guess that's what this article calls Second Mountain Living. Yeah. Can you break that down? What What is that all about? Okay. So think of it this way. The first mountain, right? That's all about climbing to the top. Okay. You know, achieving success, but success as society defines it. Right. But that second mountain, that's about finding, you know, a deeper meaning, right. like serving something larger than yourself. So it becomes less about, you know, what can I achieve and more about, like, how can I contribute? Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So, so less about the fame and fortune, more about, like, purpose and giving back. Exactly. And it sounds like, you know, this whole Italian journey, it's, it's kind of a direct reflection of that. Oh, absolutely. It's not just like working on some random films in Italy. He's really immersing himself in the culture, even learning the language, you know, for this role in Hey Joe. Right. He plays this like alcoholic World War II vet who's oh. trying to, you know, rebuild his life in Naples. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So an alcoholic vet mm. struggling to find his place in this this new world. Yeah. I mean, come on. It seems almost too perfect. Yeah, right. right. Given everything that Franco was going through. You can't help but see the parallels. Right. I mean, this choice of role, it really does speak volumes. Yeah. About his desire for, like, a fresh start. Yeah. A chance at redemption, you know. Right. It's like he's living out this second mountain philosophy yeah. on screen, you know. Mm -hmm. Like, finding a purpose and meaning in a way that, I don't know, he might not have even considered before. Yeah, it's a whole different approach. And let's not forget, like, the dedication involved in learning Italian for this. Right. That's not easy. No. It really shows his commitment to this mm. this new path. Yeah, but this new path also seems to have come at a cross, right? Yeah. Like, uh, the article mentioned this falling out with Seth Rosen, mm -hmm. his, like, longtime friend, collaborator. He even said, and this is a quote, I love Seth, but I guess it's over. Wow. I mean, that's got to be heartbreaking. That is, it really is. And yeah. while we can only speculate about the specific reasons, I think it highlights the the ripple effects of this whole situation, right? Yeah. I mean, it just underlines the idea that even when you're trying to, you know, make a fresh start, some things, they just change. They're irrevocably changed. So, I mean, what does it all mean? Yeah. Like, we have James Franco, right? Once at the top, the pinnacle of Hollywood success. Yeah. Now you know, searching for, for redemption, a different kind of fulfillment, and he's doing it all in Italy. I mean, can a successful career reinvention really lead to, you know, genuine redemption? 
That's a great question. It's complex, right? Yeah. Is it enough to just, you know, shift gears professionally? All right. Or does true redemption require something deeper? Yeah. Like a more fundamental change within. Yeah. It's like he's climbing that second mountain, but we don't really know if he'll find what he's looking for at the top, right? Exactly. And I think this whole story, it really challenges our usual ideas, you know, mm -hmm. about ambition, forgiveness, even just, you know, what it means to live a meaningful life. Absolutely. It really does. It leaves us wondering, what does redemption really look like? Mm -hmm. You know, is mm -hmm. it this public act, a career change, or is it something much more like internal and personal? Yeah, that's a great question. What do you think? That's like the million dollar question, you know, and Franco's journey, I think, as it unfolds, it's going to keep sparking these important conversations. Absolutely. You know, about, you know, societal values, how we define success. Yeah. Maybe it'll even make us question, you know, our own mountains to climb and the paths that we take. I love that. It's certainly food for thought, wouldn't you say? Food for thought. Yeah, definitely. All right. I like it.